Madonna's pregnant, Iman's pregnant, Cherie Blair's just had baby number four. There are 50% more 40-something women having babies than 10 years ago. <laughs> Suddenly 40 came along and I thought, hmm, <laughs> I haven't had any children yet. But it hadn't gone out of my mind. Even though you're older, you don't, you feel exactly the same age inside. You may not look it. <laughs> but is a late arrival always welcome? I was just dumbfounded. You know, like the idea that I should go have a pregnancy test at 46. Can women in their 40s who want a baby rely on medical science for help? You can have a 50, 60, 70, 80 year old pregnant. The question is, is it right and is it wise? Two would be our absolute dream to have. Warren would love three. three. <laughs> Tonight on Real Life, we meet the old mums who will be pensioners at the school gates. Twenty-one-year-old Lauren is celebrating her birthday with her family. Among the guests are Lauren's aunt Diana, her partner Simon, and their daughter Rachel. Diana is 48. Because of her age, she has turned to Lauren to help her have a child. She is seven months pregnant using an egg that Lauren has donated. The Lauren knickers, yeah? Yeah, Lauren's pants. <laughs> Lauren will be both cousin and genetic mother to the new baby. Second. <laughs> Diana's pregnancy will further complicate what are already labyrinthine family relationships. Her first daughter, Rachel, came from eggs donated by Lauren's sister. Kirsty and Lauren are sisters. Rachel is my sister's, Diana's daughter. But Kirsty donated an egg, so biologically it's Kirsty's daughter. Wait, no, he's over there. Daddy's over there. Diana is both Rachel's mother and her great aunt, while Kirsty is also Rachel's mother and cousin. And Rachel's aunt is also her grandmother. My sister's pregnant with the current baby. It's due on about May the 20th. So the babies will be half brother or sister, and they'll also be cousins. Diana didn't decide to have children until she met Simon in her mid 40s. <laughs> After six months without conceiving, she went to a fertility clinic. To have a child, she was told she needed donor eggs from a younger woman. She decided to find her own donor to avoid a five-year wait. I suppose I spent a few months. Um, and you look at everybody and think, can I ask her? No, no, I can't ask her. And you go, and people shouldn't be over 35, so a lot of my friends who'd had children were over 35. Um, you can advertise, I advertised. Um, I did get replies, and the, but nobody followed it through, nobody came. Uh, to be a donor. And uh, it was then eventually that I thought, well, how about my nieces? And uh, I approached my sister first because my sister's always been very maternal and into babies and things. And I thought, well, I'll put it by her and see what she thinks. I said, well, who were you thinking of? And originally she said she was thinking of Lauren because Lauren looked like her physically. Uh, but she said that the clinic preferred older, you know, because Lauren at that time was only 18. So I said, yes, I'd speak to Kirsty. I spoke to Kirsty, and it sort of went from there, really. I just see it as like donating blood. You never know what your blood's like getting up to. So it's just like donating part of your body. I'd be curious about, obviously, what it looks like and to see, but that's about it, really. I still sort of be treated like a cousin, like I treat Rachel. All over the cake. Yes, you've got some in there. Look. It gets emotional because it's a baby and everything. 
but they have donated a bit of their body. Well, that's how I look at it. And and we've used that part. Can we do it? Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. I carried her for nine months and I gave birth to her and she's my child and I don't feel in any way that she's not. She wouldn't be here without me. Carol and her husband, Ken, are the oldest parents at their daughter's school. Jenny, now six, was born when Carol was 47 and Ken, 50. Carol never resorted to fertility treatment, even though she believed she couldn't have children. When her period stopped at the age of 46, she thought she had started the menopause. Brent said, there's something matter with you. She says, you haven't had a period. You're losing your colour and you're not eating your food. She says, I think you ought to go and have a pregnancy test. And I, I was just dumbfounded. You know, the idea that I should go have a pregnancy test at 46. But I did. Carol and Ken had been together for 16 years without Carol getting pregnant. Ken already had two grown-up children from a previous marriage. I wanted to have children, but it just didn't seem that we were going, I was going to do. It was a real pang. I love holding babies. Sometimes I'd have a hold of the baby and then go away and have a little weep, even. Carol's pregnancy test proved positive. Ken, who was already a grandfather, would have to be told he was to be a father again. I don't really know what sort of reaction I was expecting from Ken when I told him. I didn't really think that he would be upset or annoyed. You'll think of something now. I suppose it was in the back of my mind that maybe he wouldn't want me to be pregnant. I bet you can't spell Grandad's name, can you? However, try. I think we were just about starting to make plans. Stanley. When we came and bought this bungalow. See? Uh, for retirement purposes, maybe in five or six years' time, we might start uh, thinking about buying a caravan or something, or uh, and, uh, and having a bit of leisure time to ourselves rather than us both work. When it was confirmed I was pregnant, and things started to uh, worry us. The health of a baby, the chances of a baby being. 100%. We worried that we were perhaps too old to bring up another family. All these things had to be looked into and taken into account of whether we went on with this pregnancy. Heels together, right up we go, big. Ooh, ah. Carol knew that the baby would be a similar age to Ken's grandchildren. Six years on, his daughter, Jenny, shares a ballet class with his granddaughter, Shannon. And have a look we did choose to have the child, and everybody makes that choice that they are going to go into this with their eyes wide open. And I just hope that we can keep up with her. We'll hold our skirts. I've got to wake those fairies up, haven't we? So it's featuring. Did she have a short nose like that? Yeah, the nose is, is yes, look. No, it's similar as well. Very similar. Oh, it is. In that one, you can see it is. Yeah. Diana and her sister have already so, noticed a resemblance between Rachel and Rachel's genetic mother, Kirsty. It'll always stay turned up like that. Yeah. So this is Kirsty when she was a baby there, and it's how Rachel looks in comparison. Got one here when she was just born. Yes, yeah, she'd got the same shaped face and turned up nose. And there's pictures of her. Stood against the uh, Rachel stood the other day, sort of banging on the window, and Kirsty used to stand and, and do this, and probably lots of children do it. 
But you could see the back of her head and... The same shape? Yeah. I think it's the, the curls on the back that, <laughs> that do it. Because of the tangled family relationships, the fertility clinic insisted that everyone involved in the donor process had to be assessed by counsellors. Some of the questions seemed a bit weird. Would I look at it as Simon's sperm making love to my egg? Would I be falling in love with him? What was your response to that? No. It would there be any chance that I'd drill off with a child or something like that? Or would I want it when it was born? I was like, no, I don't want children. <laughs> How would I feel about Diana smacking Rachel in front of me? How did I feel about Diana being an older mum? I think there's going to come a time when she will want to know where her origins are. I mean, we're going to tell her anyway right from the beginning, but... To say, I can't tell you where you came from, if they happen to have that strong desire to know what did my mother actually look like, where, where my genes come from, then I think it's hard not to be able to tell them. I'm sure she will, at some stage, in a fit of whatever, say, I'm going to live with Kirsty, I'm not living with you, and I'll say, off you go then, goodbye. But kirsty has got to want her, and Kirsty will have her own children probably by then. But it'll be late. it'll be teenage years, won't it? She might decide, oh, life's rosier, I can do what I want at Kirsty's. I can't at my mother's. Thank you. No, should we press this button? Watch this, though. you just got to wait until the time occurs and then see what they do. Thank you. By the time Jenny is a teenager, her parents will have become pensioners. We thought, well, this child will have two old people bringing her up. And perhaps that was selfish of, her, of us, to, uh, to want to bring a child up as we were, when we were older. And a lot of people will say that. Now that we're doing it, it doesn't seem that we're selfish. She doesn't think that we're any different from many other mothers or parents. I don't think she does. She never said anything to us. I mean, I have had people that say, what does Jenny think? But she doesn't. I keep wanting my, my mum to have another baby so I can have a sister or a brother. Do you think she will? No. Why not? Because she keeps saying she's too old. I, will, I could talk to him at night before I go to sleep. And I, I say, well, I'm sorry, sweetheart, but I can't have another little girl or another little boy. Uh, but I think... Lots of other children ask that question, you know. My other friend's mum's look younger. I keep thinking my dad is 50. She only made one mistake, that one, that one, I think. Are you working it out year by year and saying, well, now that I'm going to be 68, you know, uh, she's going to be wanting to, uh, she's going to be going abroad with, what can I say to her, like, you know, uh, I sit here sometimes and say, you know, look at them on television there, look at this Ibiza job here, what's got, what, this carry on here. Oh, I hope she don't get involved in that. I can even say that now, you know, at 57 and not at 65 or 68. We are old-fashioned. Uh, I was brought up with standards, and she knows what we expect of her. Even at this age, she knows. Apple pie, part of my diet, is. I just believe that as time goes on, she'll get to know our standards, and hopefully I'll live by them. Don't help me with that, do you, ironing? No. You'll have to learn. 
I'll have to ask Grandma how old you've got to be to iron. Put these on this radiator. I just can't wait till it comes out now. Yeah, I know. You have enough, don't you? Yeah. Diana has only two months to go before her second baby is due. Even when I'm nine months, you won't tell that I'm not expecting. I'm not eating <laughs> loads anymore. No. I've been quite ill, actually. Yeah, maybe the next one might be easier. Maybe it's exactly it's... the same. <laughs> the second one's been exactly the same. Horrible. Just sometimes I have to keep just lying down. I just go and have ten minutes wherever I am. How old did you say you were? Oh, 48. It's marvellous, isn't it? I just never got round to it earlier. <laughs> OK, let's get moving then. Remember to keep your shoulders under the water. The hardest thing I find is being pregnant because then I feel tireder. Once the baby's here, my energy levels are fine again. Then I can keep going. Keep it going. I've always been very active. And I don't see that stopping. In fact, I was running three miles a day before Rachel was born. So I only stop, obviously, once I've got pregnant. So it might be harder in the double buggy to go running. <laughs> <laughs> but the plan is to keep running again once, uh, once they're born. We're travelling down the pool. Knees up. Diana has adapted Rachel's schedule into her working life. She hopes she can do the same with the next baby when it arrives. When the new baby comes, then there'll obviously be two of them, so Simon will take one and I will take the other to get them ready in time. I've got to get you showered. I will feed the baby first and then hit the same time scales is the plan. Good girl. That's it. Good girl. I know, it's tough. It's early, isn't it? It is early. Yeah, it's early. Good girl. It's early. 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 Diana works as a lecturer in a higher education college. Before that, she was in the RAF. Are you still tired? Children were never high on my list at all. I didn't get in touch with my maternal feelings, no. I don't think I ever did until I had Rachel. They didn't, they didn't surface at all. There was no time with my job or anything that I did that they would surface, really. In my 30s, I was leading a single life in that um, you know, work comes first and everything after that, very close second is the social scene. That's what you gear for. You travel a lot, you go on holidays a lot. Um, you spend your money on clothes and cars and, and really live life. And I hadn't been a mother and I hadn't had children and I did, uh, maybe for the wrong reasons, think... Um, yes, I'd, I'd like to try motherhood because I haven't tried it. And you can't send them back. You can't change your mind afterwards. But I'm not one to give up easily anyway. So had I had Rachel and thought, gosh, this is a major mistake, then I'd have done the bit that I should do as, for motherhood. She'd have had me for the next 15 years and then I'd have moved on once she'd left home. Push that down. Di definitely changed, as, as people do when they have children. And I think she was warned off by her sisters and all her friends that... We all changed. No, I won't, she said. No, I'll be the same. But, uh, but she, the changes were good. Orange, the relationship with her and, and Rachel is something to behold. When I never thought I'd see that. And, and all her friends said, didn't think I'd ever see you with a baby. Yes, we just put that there for a minute. Put it there. Good girl. Please. Sit down. Have your breakfast like the squirrel. Diana will continue to work up until the birth of the new child. The baby will go into the creche at work just as Rachel has done since she was three months old. Yeah. Here's your spoon. Let's get you some juice. I would like more time with her, I think. Um, but then, I don't know, I, I suppose all day with her, I think she, I, she would miss, wouldn't she? She'd miss the other company of the other children. Let's go. From the beginning, we've never changed our lifestyle. Whatever we've done, we've tried to take her along and fit her in. I don't think your life should revolve around a child. Providing she's happy and she fits in with what we're planning, then I think that works. I didn't ever think, you know, will motherhood be different? Just ne it never crossed my mind to change to be a mother. Bye bye. That is fast, isn't it?
<laughs> 45-year-old Christine Mould is a grandmother who wants to have a baby. Her two-year-old grandson is from Claire, her grown-up daughter. What do, you, what do you say to Granny? Big up! Yeah, thank you. What do you want? Mm. A little bit. Thank After her mother. first marriage ended, Christine met Simon on a blind date. Simon, at 28, is 17 years younger than Christine. They married four years ago. Granny wants a bit. We're very lucky. I mean, we've got something that I probably never had in my first marriage. I mean, we are really, really close. And it's nice to say that the age gap hasn't made any difference. We've been very and Because lucky. I'm still living out that part of the fantasy, see? <laughs> that older woman still. <laughs> I got married very, really young, actually. I was only 19 when I first got married. And I had my first child when I was 22. And I wanted to have my children and have my life. And, you know, and so therefore, when I was older, I could then sort of pursue my holidays and and career and things like that. But as soon as I met Simon, and it was, a, it was just one of those things, I knew um, that I wanted a child with him. And it was something, if you like, maternal. I don't really know, but um, it, just because I'd had children, it didn't mean that I didn't want any more. And um, it was just something that was quite compelling, really. Um, Simon didn't really force the issue at all. I think probably it was my idea. and sort of said to him, shall we try and you know, have a baby together. Whoa. Is that a snowman? No, don't be silly. <laughs> Good boy. I've always wanted little ones, you know, as long as I can remember. Hi. It was something I just bothered up, never even bothered to say. And that until somebody said it first. Hmm. And, that, and took that, as you say, that lid off, and um, it all started from there. In her early 30s, Christine thought she didn't want any more children and decided to be sterilised. If she was to conceive again, she would need IVF treatment. We decided we'd have three attempts, and on the third attempt, using my own eggs, um, I actually did fall pregnant, and that was about two, exactly two years ago. And everything was really, really good, wasn't it? It seemed to be it. That was, that was it done. But, uh, but not. Oh. When we went for our normal routine twenty-week scan, they um, picked up a, an abnormality in the baby. So unfortunately, um, in a way, it was decided for us because I think the baby probably would have died before it was born. But we had a determination at about twenty-one weeks. because you've gone past a certain amount of weeks through your pregnancy, you have to deliver the baby normally. So um, they just induce you like they would at a full-term baby. Um, that, um, so what we, what we then did, we, we decided, they said, said to us at the hospital that you can see the baby if you want to, um, or you can just forget about it. We actually looked at the baby, and they do recommend that you name the baby, because you were, would have done. You've actually delivered a baby. So we did um, name her, and we did actually have her cremated. Unfortunately, you know, she didn't survive, but we've got a memory. I think about her every single day, yeah. even a couple of years on. You know, mm. There's not a day go past. No. When uh, we lost Jodie, the next week, I think Claire had little Jay. Mm. And so we were still grieving ours, and there we were, you know, granddaughter Claire for, for Chris, and a uh, step-grandchild for me. Yeah. Say hello to him. That's a good boy. Man doing? What's the man doing? Last year, only 600 women over 45 successfully had a baby, a tiny proportion of the total births in the year. Having a late baby isn't easy. I thought, oh, maybe a honeymoon baby. Ron was 
a honeymoon baby with from his parents and I thought oh, that'd just be absolutely magical mm. and it didn't happen the first month it didn't happen the second and it went on and on and then it sort of and then it became a real oh, nightmare really every time I had a period I thought oh no Warren and Jenny got married eight years ago ever since then they've been trying for children without success Jenny is now 45 Warren is 41 you, you see other people with their school runs and their school lives and it's, it's a busy life. It's, it's full of, you know, rushing around. A lot of our friends have their own families and their own little units and, um, and so we do feel sort of slightly apart from all that because we don't have our little unit yet. Mm. You always feel you're sitting on the sidelines, don't you, just mm. waiting to join the game. Jenny surrounds herself with children. She works as a school secretary and volunteers to help at a nursery one morning a week. OK, have you finished? You're going to do that one? It's the nurturing instinct. It's just to have a child to look after and to love and to bring up and to teach. It's just, it just seems like it's the natural thing to do. It's just that we've got, I feel we've got so much to share and to give. We do have five rooms upstairs that are well, ready and waiting. Ready and waiting. <laughs> I mean, the two of them are, are, are for, for visitors to use when they come round. I'd love to be ripping everything out of there and redecorating it and putting two, three cots or whatever in there as a, as a, a children's room. Most definitely, yeah. I'm just a big kid, I really am. I've got all my toys. What with my models and my Sabutio and uh, bits and pieces that I've collected over the years. Never been one to throw anything away, but uh, there it is. Jenny and Warren have turned to private fertility clinics for help. There's no NHS treatment available for women over 40. Over the last seven years, we've tried everything really that's available to try and help us to get, or try and, try and help me to get pregnant. We spent somewhere in the region of what, 30, 35,000? Something like yes, that? Yes, we probably spent about that much. But then I think what we've both felt is I mean, I work, most of the money that I earn just goes into a, an account that we just use for treatment. There's nothing medically wrong with either Jenny or Warren. The only problem seems to be Jenny's age. They've had 12 unsuccessful fertility treatments, but have decided to have another attempt. I just wanted actually to look at your previous attempts on the screen here very quickly with you. Well, let me just get the screen. Because Jenny is now 45, she's been told her eggs are too old and her best chance of success is to try using donor eggs. You see, it is not how the uh, Jennifer embryos did before, because, of course, the major uh, difference here is in the age of the egg. An anonymous younger woman who is also going through IVF treatment has agreed to share her eggs with Jenny. In yes, return, Jenny and Warren pay for the donor's treatment. The quality of the embryos were actually also apparently not bad at the time. There was an eight cell, an eight cell, grade two and grade two. But at the end of the day, what really makes a difference, or could make a difference, is the age of the egg. Using a donated egg, the chances of pregnancy are 45%, and the miscarriage rate is only 25 to 30%. So out of every uh, 100 who will try, 40 will get pregnant and 30 perhaps will deliver. And that's of course is significantly different uh, than using one's own eggs at this age. Nevertheless, eggs do not grow on trees. You need donors to give the eggs. Uh, it's a different genetic material. So people obviously try with their own eggs uh, as much as they can afford emotionally, physically and financially. But if that doesn't work, then there's the only other option available for them. We're very, very excited. We're excited in lots of ways because it's almost like playing a numbers game. We've been paying 
three, four, five thousand pounds ago, where we've had a four percent chance of getting pregnant. Now all of a sudden, we have a 25 percent chance. So in actual fact, it's really quite exciting. A few months after Christine and Simon lost their baby, they decided to try again. Because of her age, Christine was now advised to use donor eggs. She conceived after two attempts and is now five months into her pregnancy. Belly, Is it a little boy or a little oh, girl? Little boy or a little girl? A little girl. Yeah. Every day, we think, well, we've got to get to this stage and that stage, and I think um, we've got to 20 weeks again, and I'm sure everything is going to be okay. But since this has happened to us with Jodie, then obviously we're so much more cautious. You hopefully lightning won't strike twice, but I think you've always got it in the back of your mind. Right. I said this will just give you a nice little picture of the baby. Little cold. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Okay. Now. So there we are. There's some limbs there. Fluid around the baby. Hand, nice picture of the hand there, and the fingers. What about size wise, it's okay, yeah? Looks absolutely perfect. We'll do some measurements later on. Okay. Nice dead. You see movement of the baby's heart here. Beating beautifully there. Yeah. I'll beat so fast. Sorry. Right, okay, that's it. Well done. Okay. Give your tummy a wipe there. I'll leave you wipe it and then you're going to get up. Everything's going very well. Another appointment in a couple of weeks' time, and we'll work from there. It's just something that we've just sort of so much looked forward to over the last few years, that so it's now going to become a reality. I think we would just be the family that we've always wanted to be. Did you hear that heart go? Very loud. Yeah, it was loud. Very loud. Yeah, I'll be pleased. Jenny and Warren are due to start their treatment today, but they've already had a setback. Their donor eggs have been fertilised, but only one viable embryo was created. Jenny's chances of getting pregnant have already fallen. I'm, I'm fighting to stay optimistic. Uh, I, feel I'm, I feel I'm on a knife edge. I really do. But you're staying optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I... <clears throat> no, I try... <clears throat> Sorry, Liz. It's, it's a natural reaction to feel it's unfair, but it's not a good thought to have, is it, really? It's not a good thought to have. The older Jenny gets, the more hangs on each attempt. Her clinic, like most fertility units, will only carry on treating her up to the age of 50. Although I'm 45, I certainly don't feel 45. And so if I'm thinking about we've only got the next five years, that does worry me a little bit. You realise how long we've been married, eight years married. Five years is, is, mm. you know, is not a lot of time, so it is a worry. So as far as the embryo is concerned, it appears to be a good quality embryo. And what will happen, actually, is that my... The one viable embryo is to be implanted in Jenny's womb. So, okay. Okay. It's a good shape, Jen. It's run to the edge. <laughs> oh, they float. I know. <laughs> you got Mrs. Jennifer Silk. That's me. Okay. Just let your legs float. This is it. <laughs> 
what we can see now with the ultrasound. Oh, that's very nice. No, no, hang on. Okay. Not with the clamp. Oh. All right. <laughs> Just put your feet down there. Just now I, I really do wish you all the very best of luck. I mean, the, the, I mean, as I said, the embryo looks nice. The transfer was rather easy and straightforward. But it's a lottery, all right? And um, in two weeks, if you come and we'll do a pregnancy test and uh, just let us cross our fingers. Diane Christian is 54 years old. Her husband, Anton, is 12 years younger. <laughs> Diane gave birth to her twins, Daisy and Flora, two years ago. It was only possible for Diane to have the twins through egg donation. But she was forced to wait five years before the treatment became available. I was actually 50 when I received a letter saying, you're you're nearly the t at the top of the list with a waiting, um, waiting for eggs. Do you still want to proceed? And um, I was just so shocked. And I'm, I, I remember my next door neighbour that was, was Ran. She said, oh, you wouldn't bother now, would you? And I knew, as soon as she said it, I knew, yes, I would. <laughs> I just thought maybe they'd forgotten how old I was. I, so I, I just rang up the next day and said, you do know how old I am? And they said, yes. I said, and that's still all right? And they said, yes. So I said, well, then I'd like to go ahead. <laughs> Diane already had a daughter, Lois. She was born 14 years ago when Diane was 40. When I had Lois, I was so besotted with her that all I could think of was, you know, I've missed out all these years of not having this wonderful creature and um, just wanted to go and have another one. Again. I w wanted her to have Good. sisters or brother. So that when I'm not around anymore, she's got family. Easy to do it. Give this to Daisy then. As soon as I'd had Lois, I did get pregnant, but I lost it at 12 weeks, and uh, I didn't get pregnant again. And so I went to have more fertility treatment, and it just, it's such a slow process when you begin, because it's like, you know, take these tablets and come back in three months, and the time just goes by. Come and see the ducks. Diane was helped by the only fertility clinic in the UK that offers treatment to women in their 50s. Like they've got teeth in them. Well, I wouldn't, certainly would, myself, would not have liked to have been any older than I was. I got my treatment in it when I was 50. I think that was as, as late as I would have gone. I think that was late enough. Wait a bit, just stop still so it can get some milk. I did leave it late, and it was difficult, but the way things are today, Anything is possible. And I think if, if the, the chance is there and it's possible, then if you want to go for it, then you go for it. Look, I want them to go. Baby, out! Jenny and Warren have a difficult fortnight ahead while they wait to discover if the embryo implant has worked. Jenny takes a week off work and stays at home. Warren busies himself with his home improvements. The barns, that's really been the labour of love in the last two years, building that. The barn's too grand a title, I think, for this. More like, more like large garden shed. But uh, that's hopefully going to be 
a playroom or a hobbies room. It's got plenty of room downstairs for parties and that sort of thing. For children, it would be great. We, we live in hope, definitely. Right, um, how about, um, we'll just go for a, I don't know, jam sponge or something like that. Actually, I'm not doing any whipping, so I could do just ordinary flapjacks, but hopefully they'd be crunchier. We'll make crunchy flapjacks, okay. yeah. When I'm indoors with her, every, every ten minutes, I'm sort of saying, are you all right, are you all right, you know? I just don't seem to be in control, so this is the only thing I can really stay in control with, I suppose, just doing this work. We both ultimately hope that it's going to work, but um, I think there are lots of things that we keep to ourselves probably about sort of how much we're hoping, because we don't want the other one to... I suppose, sort of feel too responsible or... It's difficult to explain, really. It's just, um... Just how much we're pinning our hopes on it. I've got to go in thinking it's going to be yes. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking of the horror if it's no, because realising that we're... getting to the, sort of, the... the last knockings, as it were, of Jenny's chances of having a go, you know, I'm realising that my dream of having a family is probably ending. And I don't particularly like the thought of that at all. I mean, other people might think, oh, well, you know, go and get a divorce or split up and go and... But that's not... That's never been my... That's never really been... I, might, I want to live with Jen. I know logically that it's not... It's not um, sort of all up to me. I know it's both of us and everything else, but I think because it's my body that's somehow not doing the work that it should be doing, um, I do feel responsible for that. But you see, I'm 41, so I feel as I've got decades ahead, so I've got plenty of time, but Jenny hasn't. I thought the two hats were on the yeah. I think it's more selfish um, to have them just because you think, oh, I better have them, you know, otherwise I'll be too old. I think it's a better reason to, to have them when you want them, because that's when you're going to give your time to them. Because I wouldn't have done when I was young. I'd have... I would have... Um, just felt they were stopping me from doing what I wanted to do. There's lots of wrong reasons for having children. You might have a child because you think you're going to save your marriage or you want to trap somebody into getting married or there's all sorts of wrong reasons for having children. I don't think being older is a wrong reason. The difficult times I'd say were about six, seven o'clock at night when, when you're really tired and they seem to have a mad hour or so, and they're going berserk when you'd really, really like to just sit down and recharge your batteries, but um, you just can't, because um, they're demanding and you, you've got to... Mommy. ..try not to get too cross with them <laughs> when you're feeling really tired. Don't throw it! Ah. Look, throw it another one there, look. Look. Mama, do it, Louie! who definitely start, you know, um, getting aches and pains and what have you. Um, but I don't feel any different, so I don't feel I'm any different with them. What worries me slightly about it is what the children will feel themselves when, when, when they're a bit older. Um, I mean, Diane doesn't have a problem with, with the age difference, but it might not... It might work the other way around. That they, they, they may have a problem. <laughs> When Diane is 70, the, the twins will be 19, and there's a quite a big age difference, isn't there? I hope they wouldn't think anything. I hope they'd think I'm an old, groovy bum or, uh, you know, I'm a bit... 
me be different to uh, the other mums or whatever. I'd hope they think that. I'd like to think I was a bit different to the other ones anyway. I've, I mean, I've always, I've always liked to think I was a bit different and I, and I hope I carry on feeling like that. Two, three. Ooh! Poor mummy's arms. That good. <laughs> Two, three. <laughs> I don't think I am the sort of person that looks ten years hence. I just get, get on with life today and, and I don't look to the future. The two weeks wait are over and Jenny and Warren will find out today whether Jenny has finally become pregnant. This is the worst time. Really, for me anyway. I think it is for Jen as well. You do wonder, you know, where do you go from here? You know, if it doesn't work, what do you do? Where do you go? What, do you, what can you possibly do that you haven't done already? No, I'm angry because I can't fix it. I've always been able to fix things. It's just taken a long time to fix Jen. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Jenny and Warren Silk. Blood test. Okay, Jenny, if you just take the soup, thank you. Jennifer, I'm afraid the results are not positive. But it is, it was only one embryo. It was a good embryo. But it is a one embryo. And I know you will, you know, will feel sorry about this, but it is more important that you don't give up. And I'm saying that to you with, with, with really with real conviction. We, we, we had five eggs, yes, one for five, but at the end of the day, um, it was only one embryo, so the chances that I did explain last time are only that. You're still up on the list because somebody have come and donated in your behalf. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we will be very much prepared to give you another go. Okay. Great. Presumably we're going to need a bit of time away from this to... Yes, of course. On. I mean, in, in real terms, any time as from um, eight weeks from now, it is possible to have another treatment. That's good. Mm. Well, thank you very much indeed. Mm. Not at all. No, I'm, we'll have to, I'm really, I'm sorry for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, hope, I hope we, I know we will make it much happier. <laughs> yes, I'm, yes. I'm sure in the long term we will. Yes, yeah. definitely. Statistical odds of how many of us statistically are going to get it, it's bloody horrible. How many women in our family going back over hundreds of years this has affected? We don't know. And sometimes I think, you know, it's such a lottery, which ones of you are going to be affected? When Rosie's test results came in, she discovered she had lost out. She did carry the faulty gene. 
She started her family.